the Mercedes GLA in this new generation now as the sporty version. There are different ones available and we have as our main vehicle here today the top sporty one, the Mercedes AMG GLA 45S. The strongest works four cylinder engine. We'll find out more about that and also in exterior, interior and the performance driving experience. And now, please join us here. Thomas in front of the camera, Joan is behind on Autogefühl in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The new GLA generation is definitely wider than before, it's stronger in general, even from the base version it looks more SUV-ish, before more in the crossover direction and here the 45 and also the 35 version, they have here the vertical fins, a wide grille, this you know upside down grille with the bigger part and the lower part, Panamericana style, lower part in here with stronger bumpers. This also equipped with a night package here in black accentuations all over the vehicle. The compact class segment cars by Mercedes still start with halogen lights and optional LED and this one here is also equipped with the multi-beam LED so for more elaborated high beam function. 4 meters 41, 14 foot 5 or 174 inches is the length of the Mercedes GLA. 22 centimeters or 9 inches shorter than the GLB, for example. And here in the AMG versions, they directly start with 19 inch wheels for the 35 and the 45. 20 inch wheels are standard here for the 45S, the top sports trim, and an optional 21 inch, also in the black style available. Still here with the crossover cladding, although we have the AMG model. They wanted to keep it SUV looking, definitely. And then again, with the night package, you also have the black frames here the windows and also the mirror caps right there. This GLA here in this new generation has a more upright SUV stand style and the length of the wheel is the same as with the Mercedes A-Class. So stronger here definitely in the side profile and it really looks grown up now here in this new generation. Here at the rear the tail lamps more in the horizontal style then the AMG gets a special exhaust in the lower part but wait a minute Auto fuel fake exhaust police because these are just beauty tips. There is air running through there, but the real exhaust is on the inside actually. And here the 45 version gets four beauty exhaust tips, although they're just two exhaust pipes. Hmm. Yeah, about that. And technology wise, it's interesting that 4Matic Plus here means there's the all wheel drive front plus rear, but variable distribution also. And the plus means there's also the distribution left to right, so a torque vectoring, so there can be more torque at one side, depending you know when you're inside a corner or something. This will help a little bit more driving out of the corners. That's a hardware difference than to the 35 model. Not so many difference, but there are actually ones. And the price, of course, for the 45 is way higher. And suspension-wise, by the way, there's a normal fixed suspension and then there's an adaptive suspension, which also has both actually have an AMG focus, so both suspension modes stiffer. The GLA AMG models come with a 2.0-liter four-cylinder turbo petrol engine. This is the top horsepower spec right here in the 45S with 412 horsepower. Wow, 412 horsepower from a 2.0-liter engine? Hmm. 500 newton meters of torque, 4.3 seconds is the actuation figure, and 0.1 seconds slower with 387 horsepower in the normal 45 model, or in the 35 model with 306 horsepower, 400 newton meters, 5.1 seconds. So, 
this one here 0.8 seconds faster than the 35 model and here this engine then is built by one guy actually that's the AMG concept they all derive from the base same engine but this one here built in a little bit different way with the 45 model if it's worth the extra price that's of course doubtful but this one definitely here when you want you know the maximum possible and the all-wheel drive again front plus rear here in the AMG models, a little bit more variable than with the base GLA models and a little bit more torque to the rear always than with the normal GLA. And then again, with the torque vectoring here exclusively for the 45 models. And here as a comparison, the GLA 35 AMG, a little bit less horsepower. Main difference is A, the engine here, this is a normal stock engine, whereas the 45 engine is this one man, one engine, hand built at AMG. So this is the main difference. And the stiffening measurements that were done actually here, almost the same. So also with additional stability bars on the top and also a plate below the engine, but then not at the rear axle, whereas the 45 also gets additional stiffening at the rear axle. So this is another technology difference. And Wheels actually start with 19 inch for the 35 and the 45, just 20 inch are standard for the 45S, but option here with these cars, 21 inch on all the cars we have here today, but that's just an option. And what you can also very well see here in the front, it just looks the same with the vertical fins here, so visually hard to differentiate between 35 and 45. The only thing you see here, this is just, you know, about the night package here, this is the normal chrome style or silver style and also the side mirrors there in the vehicle color whereas with the night package you can see the dark accentuations all over the place at the side mirror and also in the lower part here more in a sinister style just here in the rear this is a real visual difference whereas the 45 here gets this dual exhaust on each side so four flutes overall well, at least from the looks, here you can see two pipes and they are also not real, just the outer tip, but the real one is on the inside. So let's say half fake exhaust or so. Yeah, and then there's of course the batch, the GLA 35 batch. So really hard to differentiate between 35 and 45, but at least we've shown the differences now. key it's very nice slim and light and here also in a dark shape yeah then door closing sound yeah it sounds quite solid inside of the doors leather red materials sporty look here with the yellow contrast stitches of course there are different styles available then an aluminum look you can also get carbon fiber ish decor elements for example window levers here they're not galvanized however compact um, segment but you know, yeah, this is already a very expensive vehicle. Then door pockets are actually quite large and the door itself is really upright. The cockpit here with a special AMG steering wheel, flat bottom. Then you have special gauges here left and right for picking driving modes, for example, soon showing you more of that. Cruise control here on the left side, left thumb control of the left screen, right thumb control of the other screen. Usually a GLA would come with 7-inch screen left and right, and then optional, a bigger one on the right, 10.25 inch. And then this is the top setup, 10.25 inch on both sides. But in most markets, 35 and the 45 models here already come with this more elaborated setup. In Germany, it's like this. In most markets, it will also be the same. As for the seating choices, you start with the base sport seat, which is not the one you can see here. The base sport seat is not that extreme, so to say. And it starts also with Dynamica microfiber on the inside and article letterbed on the outside. So the base sport, speed, sport seat is the one to go for. 
Then option you can have this different form. This is the super sport seat. It has more bolstering, it's slimmer, less bolstering at all. You know, from the you know from the volume, but more bolstering than to the outside then from you know from the frame. And this is also the optional animal skin option. So both is actually a bad choice. This seat is less comfortable than the base sport seat. And also, of course, here you sweat more in summer and it's cold in winter times and you support a cruel industry. But they have a lot of choices here in the compact models by Mercedes to go animal free as well. So that's a very good offer they have overall and the base, you know, almost all AMG models besides S-Class and E-Class 63, all yeah, an S Coupe 63, but all others, I think, um, they have the standard Dynamica microfiber inside, article leather and outside, and that's really a very good setup. Here, then again, very stiff as for the um, for the seat here. However, the seating position is still very high in this GLA. This new with this new generation, really higher than in the previous generation. And you sit also about 14 centimeters, 5 inches higher than in the Mercedes A-Class, for example. So it's really way higher than the Mercedes A-Class and thus also more comfortable than again, minus the super sport seat. Head clearance here, there's no panoramic roof in this vehicle, in this very one. There is one available. One means a six, six with one, still some headroom left, no problem. Will be a little bit less with the panoramic roof. And then up and down, in and out for the steam wheel, very smooth process. And it looks a little bit overloaded, doesn't it? Hmm. But it's actually quite self-explanatory. Soon more to this. And the seats you control at the inside of the doors. Always tricky to review it on camera then. You like front and the back and then the back part of the seat and also with the memory function. Interior overview, talked about the screen sizes already, but it's a very clean layout. Then big turbine men's design, but with a lot of black paint and liquor all over the place. Here there's a nice insert here with the bright aluminum. And then again, leatherette cover here on top of the dashboard, the Art Deco material, yellow contrasts in this case, but you can also get other ones. Then the steering wheel, once again, good grip, good size, but yeah, a little bit overloaded, definitely. And you can see here, there's a volume control right there. It's good with the metal, like kind of knurling, or galvanized style. Picking up the phone, right thumb then here, you can control this, the right screen, but also with touch. Left screen is no touch, but then the left thumb, for example, in this case, my right thumb, can control this here, and this here for the adaptive cruise control. So when I turn on the engine, then we see, for example, also that there are the driving modes here at the steering wheel, sports, plus, plus sports, plus, plus, and so on, race mode. So, and this is really helpful because then you don't have to search here or do lower down there. You can directly pick it here. And on the left side, you can then switch actually what you want to have. AMG driving dynamics. Um, this also changes some parameters of the vehicle or starts off on and off. And then you can click here through the menu, for example, if you want to control the suspension, stiffness, um, exhaust node, for example. <laughs> well, um, not sure if you want to do so much with that while driving, but the right one here is definitely a good idea. Then, Still a manual climate knob here. Nice clicking sounds. And also where the vents are coming from. In the lower area, again, a lot of black, black piano like I used. You just clean it out, no doubt about that. But then you can slide it open. You can put your smartphone right here. Inductive charging pad is right there. But also the USB connection, USB-C for the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Then somewhat adaptive cup holders. This trackpad in the lower part, you can control also the infotainment screen with that, and the dynamic driving modes are also being picked here. But yet again, I think I would just do it at the steering wheel then. And once more, armrest, split opening, good idea, and two more USB-C supplies together with some cubby hole. Here we can see the CarPlay integration, not all over the screen, but I think Wide enough, the optional Burmester sound system here is actually pretty cool. I mean, the best, almost the best one in the compact vehicle, I think. There are three different options for the Mercedes compact vehicles, and even the base one sounds already good. The mid one sounds even better, and this one here, wow. I mean, I think they have the best sound system at the moment for compact vehicles, so heads off. And the extra prices are also still okay. 
comparing to what other extra prices you have here in this vehicle. You go back to the normal Mercedes menu right here, then you have a main home screen like this. Actually, you know, a quite good overview. GPS looks like this. You can also switch to a 3D view, for example. Here, you can put north up, then this would be the th more three-dimensional view. We also have these visualizations, for example, of the Mercedes Museum. And and they have special gauges here for the AMG. So when I turn on the engine, it takes a few seconds, then you can see, for example, here, you know, like the, how the wheels are turned in. Yeah, whoever wants to look at that while driving, here the engine output is maybe more interesting, newton meters of torque, and so on, dynamic select. everything very individually dynamics and so on but yeah whoever wants to use this really you know very individualizable individualizable then again this track app whoever wants to use it on racetrack yes i know okay so for example for the hockenheim ring and then you can actually measure your pace on the track <laughs> yeah across the star yeah we're not on the hockenheim ring at the moment but just to show you that this is also possible then with the 45 version and an example for the MBUX voice input. Hey Mercedes, what's the weather? Currently it is cloudy in Stuttgart with a temperature of 27 degrees. Yeah, there we go. So one of the options you can use for this actually. And we have a camera I also want to show it to you once more, start the engine. And here we go, a very crystal clear resolution and you can also pick different ones you have here in this most sophisticated rear view or surround view camera trim and here on the left side you can pick the classic gauges but also then special for the mg these super sport gauges so they are a little bit more let's say <laughs> racetrack oriented um you can see when i turn on the engine i'm turning on the engine so often today the RPMs go like this, but then you can see all temperature, for example, and here the speed will go from left to right, strangely, but you also have normal digital speed right there. But if you don't like them, you can also just pick the normal gauges at any time, and you also have a GPS, for example. Um, you can pick previous generation, and it's so funny where the RPMs are, and it's a small map, but it's also possible to have the map all over the place like this. And you can go for head-up display option, very clear to read with the speed, also loud speed and GPS information. So I think this is one of the extras I would go for. In the rear, you can see here instead of the doors, also with a soft touch leatherette. So that's a good build quality, definitely. Also reasonable door pockets once again. And the doors open also quite wide to install some child seats, for example. Then you can see with these optional performance seats, you have you know, a slim seat. So that might have an advantage that you have a little bit more legroom in the rear. And also this seating bench is a nice option, is actually real movable. Once again, the same account for how you sit higher than in the A-Class is also the number where you can move the seat here in the rear. It's 14 centimeters or five and a half inches. Let's just try that. So here we go inside, easy entry and a lot of leg room left. So this is a good package overall. It's not a long vehicle, but has a lot of space on the interior. Headroom also works here for tall L's in the rear. And then again, this moving bench option, one third, two third split, 40 centimeters front or five and a half inches front and back. So really very nicely done. You can also adjust the back part of the seat a little bit if you want it, for example, a little bit more upright. Like this. <laughs> Not too easy to do that. So now you can adjust the back ball. It's that's really tight here, how we can, well, like this, and then all the way back again, so you can adjust even though it's not the, yeah, not the easiest function. Then, middle part here, adaptive cup holders, together with nothing more. <laughs> so, and the middle climate unit, it's just two vents here, but also again the turbine style, and then two USB, C supplies. 435 to 1430 liters is the capacity. A little bit 
more than in the previous generation and you also have a good opening right here square dimensions here at the side also have simple luggage already inside right there and it also fits here in a vertical way but just barely let's just test it here when we close the hatch once again i hope this will work uh, yeah that's very close but it does this additional lower floor mat by the way you can also of course just remove that then let me give you a clear view so here below that summer space and you know the repairing equipment and so on and the measurements here we go about 78 centimeters in the length a good meter a little more in the width and the height here to the cover is about 40 centimeters and the overall height about 75 centimeters and the absolute length here to the front seat as I would be driving we go with about 1 meter and 60 last but not least we test the child safety here from the torque yeah so so well done so they always close so properly but yet it's so soft it doesn't even hurt at all so I think Mercedes has one of the best calibrations here of the electric hatches Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge, active driving lounge with the AMG version of the GLA here in the 45S version and let's pull to sports plus mode here and let's floor it out. So steering wheel here not too progressive, I really have to steer a lot still but a good feedback here in the sport plus mode. Nice sound, so sound wise not missing more cylinders and the throttle input is so direct wow so there's no I mean we're going uphill here you know it doesn't feel like we're going uphill whoa nice also some blubbering sound from the exhaust this is really something to enjoy right here and the car is keeping really upright the road is very very good here so I also have no problem as you know for suspension would be too stiff but I'm telling you that the depth of suspension is really stiff especially in sports mode and the shifting pedals are so crisp to use well here just now like accelerating straight if I would do like here 40 kilometers to let's see that's 100 wow cool very good performance here as well acceleration and in, especially in a sports plus mode here I mean there's even a race mode that would be even more extreme um, it's dry road so I can actually do that but usually it's just you know meant for closed circuits here also pretty silent as for the noise insulation at the 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour and this car is so stable on the road although it's not a big car but here in the AMG version it feels like it will have a bigger stance on the road because suspension is stiff the stiffness um, you know technology behind it also that they reworked the whole car and added some stability bars and so on this you, you really feel that this car feels um, really stiff I can tell you that when the corner is a little bit tighter than expected no problem and we are still in the SUV and it really feels like a pure sports car although this is a small SUV wow so I mean I could imagine driving the the Nürburgring Nord Schleife with this one no problem at all wow and also a very cool road here to enjoy for you I would say we just do the same one again right I mean we won't find a better one so let's just turn it around we can also take another look at the rear view camera there we go drawing you from above this car can be eased around the good thing is you have an upright seating position therefore it's more comfortable than a normal or usual sports car that is then the reason why you would go actually for this GLA right here you can go back to the comfort mode and then 
relax a little bit more. This is possible at any time. However, the throttle input in the combat mode is already quite crisp, so there will be like a quick, um, you know, quick shift down as well. But here everything is kind of preloaded than in the in the sports mode, and to use the shifting belts, of course, is then even cooler. So. I can just recommend using the manual shifting pedals. Even going going down it, for example, you can use a little bit more engine brake. That's definitely helpful. And this clicking sound when using it, especially when upshifting, always a pleasure. Of course, we also have the biggest wheels available, which are on this car. And yet again, the stiff suspension together with the very big wheels is cool when the road is so fresh as it is right now here. But we also like when we started our, our drive, we went over like a small hump in the road um, and we're like, whoa! <laughs> so you really, really feel that. Wow, look at that here. Car is so stable right there. The only thing, again, I think the steering could be a little bit more progressive than the have to steer a little bit less in tight corners. That's something I would have wished. Other than that, it's really a racetrack setup they found here. The 45, of course, more punch, even a little bit more extreme than the 35, but hardly ever you can use the full potential here of the 45 version. So the 35, of course, will be enough. It's not that much slower and it's not that much less stiff also. You have here the active torque vectoring, of course. When I get out of the corners, um, the car feels less, less front wheel biased. So, although it's a front-wheel driven platform, I have no complaints of, you know, feeling like, oh, this is like front-wheel biased, um, I don't, I need like a bigger punch from the rear. Of course, a pure rear-wheel driven car is still something else, but due to this active torque vectoring and the more or less variable torque distribution front and rear axle, I would just play it safe here. Um, due to that, I think, you know, you imitate a little bit rear wheel drive or limit at least the uh, the negative effect of a front wheel drive only car. So really impressive what I've, what I've done here with the compact SUV. Let's see, is there anyone coming? No. Here now when we're going down of course, the brakes are being applied more. They use bigger brake brakes here on this vehicle and they're doing a very good job on this about spiders also using the day. Wow. Interesting, by the way, also the difference in the sound when going downhill or uphill. And I would say let's go uphill once more. This is such a perfect route to do that. And what I really like is we can ease this car around pretty quickly. Cross traffic alert, autonomous emergency brake is standard equipment. So a lot of safety equipment is standard. And then you can also optionally go for more of that. Just leave a little bit until we're out of town that we don't annoy anyone. Let's go to the race mode once more. Try to feel more of this torque vectoring. I shift back myself. Here we go. And even if I'm in the wrong gear, no problem. More than enough power. So, yeah, you sound like, ah, oh, four cylinders, whatever, but. When you feel this performance, think like, wow. And of course, the agility, the short wheelbase of this one. So, definitely better agility than with a bigger sports car. And I would say, I just leave you a little bit more to the corners and the sound now to enjoy this 45 model. to some motorway driving. The car is very, very confident here on the road, although it's not the biggest one. It's an cruising control to about 100 kilometers, 60 miles an hour. And the noise sensation is quite good. It's very silent in here. And as long as the road is well done, 
yeah, that's not the biggest of problem then. Still, the sport seats are also quite stiff then on long journeys. But even here in the comfort mode, this car is so quick in the reaction from the throttle, so you don't need to be in the sport mode. And immediately you have a good punch forward, even though if you just, you know, if you are very gentle with the throttle there. You're now going to 120 kilometers an hour, and this is just like barely touching the throttle. And this, for example, also a difference 45 and 35. So the 45 just more responsive, especially here in the S version, um, even more extreme than the 35 model. Although we have the adaptive suspension, it's getting quite rough in here, especially if you have some bumps in the road. You definitely feel it, so it's not a compromise of sportiness and comfort. It's just sportiness, definitely, that's the way it is. Assistance systems work very well, cruise control, adaptive cruise control, keeping the distance to the car in front of me. Now here the lane keeping assist here is also working very actively and properly, that's good. Just the run of road protection is done by brake intervention, you have to be aware of that. So if you don't have this active lane keeping assist active, then you get to the side of the road, you can be surprised quite a lot of times. Here the steering wheel is not capacitive yet, so you have to give this, you know, like movement information that you still say, still here, <laughs> still here. So, but overall I think also a nice and solid performance here. You just have to like this very, very sporty character, which you do not necessarily expect from a GLA, but we already experienced that even more than earlier. Let's get off the motorway here to the closing stages of our review. Of course, one more corner, and I can enter this corner here with a lot of speed, still at 100 approximately, and don't even feel like I need to brake. This car handles this so easily. Such a relaxed feeling also when you're driving really, really fast. And here we come then to a still and also to our final conclusion. And now to our conclusion for today with the GLA 45S AMG. <laughs> Smells like clutch spirit. Well, <laughs> so we had a sporty driving here today, no doubt about that. First of all, exterior, the new GLA has a stronger stance on the road. It's more SUV-ish. I really liked it. And also on the interior, when you sit there, you have more comfort because you have this more grown-up SUV feeling than it was more crossover-ish than before. So it sets itself a little bit more apart from the Mercedes A-Class, but of course they share every other thing and also the engines and so on and so on. The interior build quality is actually quite nice and they have a lot of choice of non-animal seating, full leatherette seats, even cooled leatherette seats, this really cool in this black-white scheme for example, and of course the AMG versions here, they come with the microfiber Artico mix. That's a very, very good choice they have there to offer. You can even get some microfiber at the steering wheel if you like it. I would also recommend to go for that. If you go for the 35 or the 45, it's of course a price issue. The 35 will be the best price performance then for the performance model. It's still a super expensive vehicle. I mean, the initial GLA car we had, the 250, was already at 70,000 euros. This one, of course, an even more expensive. So easily more than double the entry price. This you have to bear in mind, it's an extremely expensive vehicle, even though you, you know, might not expect it. So I think overall, and especially as a 45S, it's really too expensive. That's one of the flaws, flaws definitely. And the AMG model, you have to know that. So the, you know, the sports models with BMW and Audi, for example, they try to a little bit more master the compromise of sportiness and comfort, especially at Audi. At BMW, just the M models are really, really very sporty and super stiff. Here, the AMG models, even the you know less tuned AMG models here, the 35 in the compact segment or the four, the 53 in the bigger segments, all AMG models with Mercedes are really, really stiff, and there's a big gap between the normal models and the AMG models. So rather not a compromise of sportiness and comfort, just sportiness. So does it still make sense to put it in a GLA? Yeah, I mean you still have this upright seating position and. It's really astonishing, 
by making the car even stiffer, by making the stiff suspension, that you can drive this like a pure sports car, although it's a small SUV. So very impressive also about the horsepower output from this very small engine. Impressive, yes. Does it really make sense to get more than 400 horsepower out of 2 liters of displacement? Yeah, I think that's rather doubtful. It works, yes. How long? <laughs> I honestly don't know. And, you know, I'm more a fan of putting a little bit less horsepower in, you know, a little bit more displacement. But maybe that's just me. Whatever, we had a lot of fun here today with the 45 model, although it's definitely, you know, top of, you know, top spec. So I think more people might, you know, fancy the 45 version, watch this review, but then end up buying the 35 version, which I also recommend to go for you, you know, actually for today, or just be happy with normal 250 GLA. As for the fuel consumption, you can drive it with you know, similar fuel economy like with the normal 2 liter 4 cylinder, so about like 8 liters to more kilometers, 29 mpg US, 35 mpg UK, which is already not that good. But then again, this small engine has like such a wide span of fuel consumption, so if we really flow it out like we did it here, then you can easily reach some 13, 14 liters or more kilometers, so less than 20 mpg. And that's, of course, you know, that really hurts. That's also the thing about these very, very small engines. So, a lot of impressions here for you today. What do you think about the GLA 45? Please also tune into our normal Mercedes GLA version, because maybe, again, you have a lot of fun watching this, but end up buying the GLA 250, and so you can also enjoy this review. We will link in the video description and pinned comment. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so far. And thank you so much for all our long-term subscribers. I know you love us. We love you. So that's a mutual agreement. And see you next time.